Okay, hello there people. Today I'm going to be explaining what the translate to ref and the translate to function does. I'm going to be diving into some um, some scripting, so don't panic, don't be intimidated because it's not going to be that difficult. It's just I'm just going to explain the very basics of how things work and how you can get this to work to um, either reveal a hidden treasure or a trap door or just want to have some animated um, static objects moving around. Maybe you could even create some new kinds of doors. I don't know. The um, It's up to your creativity. And so the first thing that I'm going to look for to get this to work is going to be something like... I could use anything, any kind of static object, so it doesn't really matter, but... Um, I'm going to use something simple, so... I'm going to use like a floor and I'll push F to bring this down into position. And okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, well, just to make things more interesting, I'm going to add like a container or no, I think a trap door would be, would be just fine. Trap door. Metal trap door. That's good enough. I'm not going to worry too much about uh, how it's going to look, but I just want to get it somewhere near the center. And I can actually hide this. Uh, this is very useful by pushing the one key a couple of times, and it will make the, um, the static object disappear. And then if I put alternate one again, it makes everything appear again. Okay, so everything is set up here and I'm gonna have to need some kind of um, something to activate it. So maybe something like a, like a button. Red R. Give me a second. Okay, so here I am. I got my button set up and I got my shack floor set up and I got my trap door underneath it. So I'm about halfway there. I still have to do a couple more steps before I can get this, get this to work. And um, so the first thing that I should do is that I should make the shack floor into a static collection. And it doesn't matter what it is, just as long as it's something that I can remember. So just shack, uh, moving shack floor, I'll call it. Moving shack floor. And that's fine like that. So now, this thing is a static collection. And it just has this, um, it just has this shack floor for that. And it created this, um, this, this NIF model. And I don't know why I have to do it like this, but this is the only way that it works. But, um, okay, so the next thing that I should do is X marker heading. I should look for an X marker heading. X maker heading. X marker heading. And align it with this, make sure. And put it to about the height of that. So what should happen with this? is that this thing should move over here about I like to put it as, as close as possible to um, to its original position because I don't want to look weird anyways okay so I got all my pieces are set up now um, now to work on the script now this this um, this button has its um, has its animation already set up, but it doesn't do anything. So I'm gonna have to create a new script. Um, I guess just uh, yeah, a new script. So and it's it already since um, since the button is is an object, it, it already sets it up as an object reference for me. Translate ref. Translate um, translate moving ref there. And I'm going to create two new properties, object reference, and this is going to be my X marker heading. So 
I'm just going to call it something like translate um, destination. And another one, another object ref. And this is going to be my shack floor. So shack floor. And I'm going to select my shack floor. And I'm going to select my X marker heading. Okay, so now all this stuff is set up. This thing um, has the property of this thing and this thing. So, but nothing's going to happen because there's, there's no script yet. So, as you can see, it already has my object references here. And my script name, translate moving ref, and it extends the object reference, and it's a const. Um, I thought I put conditional as well. I guess not. Um, I guess that was the other one that, that didn't work. So how this works is I'm going to have to call an event and this event is going to be called on event activate and it is also an object reference it's going to be passed into it reference and I believe it's called action ref and end event and if I save it if I didn't put any errors it should work okay so what this is right here this is the function and um, this on activate is a function that comes from the object reference so this on activate is going to pass this other object reference which is going to be whatever clicks that button and i want only the player to be what clicks the button so i'm going to have to create an if and this conditional right here this is a conditional and this conditional is going to check to see if it is the player only the player that activated the button. So in order to do that, you gotta put game, get player, and check to see if it is true. So save it, no errors. So what this does is this just gets the value, whether it was the player that activated the button. And whatever, whatever is in this conditional is gonna be what is going to be passed the values that are going to be passed so i already have these um these two object reference set up so what i'm going to have to do this is where i have to call the translate to ref function and it's going to be from the shack floor translate to ref and this thing has this this thing has three parameters one passes the information of where the destination is and the other one is the speed and the other one's the rotation speed so I'm gonna pass the trans translate destination and give it about a speed of about 100 I don't know um, exactly how fast that is according to to how the game works um, it just it looks right to me so um, and the rotation speed, that's not important because it's not going to be rotating. So anyways, I'm going to enter a value of 10. So that is all set up. Save it. So as I go over this again, the script name translate moving to ref extends the object reference. It's constant and a conditional. It, it has two properties of, um, yeah, object reference, translate, destination, and the shack floor. So when, whenever the button is activated, it's going to pass whatever activated it. And if it's the player that activated it, then it's going to translate the shack floor to the translate destination. So I thought I saved it. Okay, so I think everything's set up. And um, I don't think I have to do anything else as far as I remember. And when I, when I try it out in game, this thing should move over here when I push this button. So I'm going to try it out in game. Okay, so here I am in game and um, there's my shack floor. As you can see, I can just walk over it. It's just a uh, normal shack floor, but if I hit this button over here, well, then it should reveal the trap door. And there you have it.
All right, so back in the editor. So that's basically how the translate to ref function works. And um, one thing to note is that the translate to ref function is not uh, is not good to use for like elevators and moving platforms like that because see this is what happens when um, when it calls the translate to ref function the the mesh moves to the side and to its destination but the collision hall stays right here up until it, it's already completed its uh, its, tra its translation so say that you wanted to try to make an elevator and the elevator moves up to its destination up like this the collision hall is going to stay in its in its same spot so what, what's going to end up happening is going to it's actually going to go through the player and the player is going to stay right here so i recommend watching my other video on how to make um elevators and platform lifts to um to to make uh, stuff like that this would be good for like saying like making a trap door like revealing a trap door like i did here or maybe uh, hide a treasure behind a painting or just make some kind of fancy door that some that nobody's ever seen before and one one thing to note is that if i fragment this and let's just say that um i just get some planks loose planks or something uh, I don't know it doesn't matter to me let's just say that I want to make something else and I want to make this thing just different like this and for whatever reason just make it look like that and detail it like that so um, fancy fancy shack floor I don't know and I did that and I once again selected the the property remember um, once I um, once I fragmented the the object it, it's something totally different so it's not gonna move so fancy shack floor and this thing is gonna move along the same way that way but still the collision still gonna remain in the same spot but you can you can pretty much design it however you like make a moving house if you wanted to and so basically um yeah that's it so let me explain what what is actually going what's going on here and when it's calling the translate to ref to ref function it's actually calling another function within this function as strange as that sounds but what it does is it just grabs those parameters and it shortens everything for you but um the translate to the translate to function it gives you a lot more parameters to work with so the same way as I'm doing here, but I'd be able to enter everything manually, like translate destination X, translate destination Y, translate destination Z, translate get angle uh, X, do the same thing. get angle Y and get angle Z and same as before the the speed and the rotation so it's a, it's a lot more flexible but it's like super long so let me save it and this thing will basically do the same thing as translate to ref and yeah, pretty much that's it is just just explaining this thing would be the same thing as that so going over it one more time if the game um, if the player is the one activating the the button well then it's gonna call the translate to function and it's gonna pass all the information from the translate uh, destination object reference so the X, Y, Z, and all the angles, and it will translate it at a speed of 100 and uh, rotation by 10. And if I was to do that, if I wanted to, to rotate it, well, it just changed the orientation of the, um, of the object reference, of the X marker heading. 
And so I guess that's it for this tutorial. That's how Translate to Ref. That's how it works. And I hope you learned something new and you could come up with something interesting. And that's it for now. Mushroom stew sounds really good right now.